everyone. Today I will be teaching you how to solve a 3x3x5 blindfold. I'll be using a variation on the old Parkman method, so if you don't know that, uh, I recommend that you check out one of the tutorials in the description. And make sure you're very comfortable with this method before you attempt to use the 3x3x5 method, because it's a bit harder. We'll break this solve into two parts. The inner 3x3 and the outer domino. First we'll solve the inner corners, which are identical to the corners on a 3x3. For this reason you can use any blindfold method you want, however I'll use Old Parkman for illustration. Second we will solve the inner edges, using Old Parkman as well, however there are a few complications that come up and there is an extra parity case that you'll need to learn. Next we'll solve the outer corners, using a method that's very similar to Old Parkman, with a new algorithm, and then we will solve the outer edges, which are also very easy. These pieces are easy to solve because they only have permutation. They will already be oriented from the 3x3 steps, so we don't have to worry about memorizing them. If you're not already familiar with Old Pachman, you'll need to know a few terms from that method. For each of the four steps in this method, we will have a buffer piece, a target piece, and a buffer area. The buffer piece, I'll demonstrate using the corner step of Old Pachman, is the piece where we start our cycles. The target piece is where we will shoot the piece to, and the buffer area, in this case these two edges, is the side effects of the algorithm that we use to solve each piece. For each piece, we'll bring it into the target position using setup moves, but we can't use just any setup moves. For example, if we're solving the red, green, white corner, we might be tempted to set it up by using L prime, F prime. However, that will destroy the buffer area on top. So instead, we'll need to do D prime, R. This will be true for each of the four steps in this method. However, each step has a different buffer area, so the restrictions will be different. For steps one and three, we also have a parity problem. If we've done an odd number of swaps, then the pieces in that step will be solved, but the buffer area will, will not be solved. In order to fix this, we simply need to fix the buffer area of that step while setting up the buffer area of the next step. In this case, it's just an R perm. We also have a parity case for step 2, but this is for a different reason. Notice how the inner edges have only one sticker, and if these two edges are switched, we wouldn't be able to tell. This is exactly what happens when we have a parity, and to fix it, all we need to do is solve the two swapped pieces, while also swapping two identical pieces in a 3 cycle. Inner corners seem a bit tricky because they only have two stickers, so you may think that they could go in either of two locations, but this is not actually true. For instance, this red-blue corner you might think could go to the yellow-red-blue or to the white-red-blue, but that's not actually true. If we actually set it up, we'll find that if we try the white-red-blue, it ends up flipped. But if we try the yellow-red-blue, it's solved correctly. Of course, you can't actually do moves on the cube while you're memorizing it, so you'll just need to do these moves in your head and be very careful not to make any mistakes. Inner edges only have one sticker, and this does cause a problem because they actually can go to two different locations. So we'll solve this problem by inventing a few rules. First of all, if we see that an inner edge and an outer edge are already paired up so they match, we'll simply solve it so that the outer edge ends up in the correct location. So in this case, we would solve this to the orange-yellow location. If the edge is not paired up with an outer edge, it can go to two locations. The first time we encounter an edge of this color, for instance this green edge, we'll send it to the white green. Later on in the solve, when we encounter another edge of this color, we'll send it to the other location, in this case green-yellow. If we run into parity on this step, it will look like this. All the edges are solved, but these two buffer corners are swapped. In order to fix this, we'll use a three-step fix. First, we'll do a T permutation in order to restore the buffer corners while swapping these two edges. Second, we'll do this algorithm. R2, F2, U2, F2, R2, F2, U2, F2. And finally, we will fix these top edges by doing U, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U. 
Now we're ready for the outer layer corners. After doing this parity, you may think you need another R2, but this is actually not true, because if you did that, you would mess up these outer pieces. We won't worry about messing up this area during our step 3, and during step 4 this is actually the buffer, and so it will come out solved at the end.